my name is Sarah Dietschy Runs with Peachy. Today we are talking about the iPad again. So a little what's on my iPad 11 inch iPad Pro as well as some follow ups with questions and comments you had from the previous 26 minute iPad review video as well as diving deep into productivity apps and the time management stuff that I've been doing. So without further ado, let's get into it. Thank you so much Norton 360 for sponsoring a portion of this video. Okay, so this is the iPad Pro 2020 uh, with the, you know, changed camera bump and not a ton has changed. If you're curious about that, you can watch my iPad Pro 2020 review where I go very in depth. Um, but this is kind of just what is on my iPad and some of the accessories I use. So I have been using this guy a ton. It travels with me wherever I go. Nowadays, that's literally just in between my office and apartment, so nothing too exciting, but I have desktop computers in both locations, so I don't really need to travel with anything super hardcore. And sometimes it's the iPad and my Dell XPS 13. Honestly, I am just so good in between these two. I just Mm, I'm a fan of both of them. So in terms of all the apps that I have, it's nothing too exciting, but I'm gonna talk about how my overall productivity workflow has actually changed a ton. So as you can see on my home screen, I have kind of basic stuff, um, but everything that I use the most is going to be here down on the dock. Like, you know, as if you would treat uh, your applications on a desktop computer, because a huge thing with the iPad is multitasking. So if I wanna pull up my OneNote and Safari, Safari, it's really easy to do that multitasking and just pulling the apps from the dock to your screen and being able to view them in split view um, or pip mode as well as just dragging on top like that. I keep the today view on my home screen because I just use it so much in between shortcuts and time tracking with timery. Having the weather and what's up next in my calendar helps so much just at a glance. There are a few apps that are just so much better on the iPad than any other device and one of them is Zillow. Whether I'm looking for new apartments here in New York, you're just always looking for the best deal or dreaming about condos. It is just such a good experience going in and out of apartments, looking through the pictures um, and zooming in and out of the map. Man, I just, I love this app. You know you're becoming an adult when this is what you do in your free time for fun. So let's talk about the productivity apps that I use every single day. If you've watched previous videos, you know that I've always been kind of scatterbrained because I've been searching for that perfect app, right? So I've used in the past Asana, Things, OneNote, Apple Notes, started getting into Notion lately. I was entertaining Google Keep and Google's apps and stuff, but I think I finally landed on something that doesn't just work for me, but it's fun to use, so I'm not just using it every now and then like I treated Asana. It was almost like a chore to go on an Asana because it got disorganized really easily, and I just, I don't know, I just, ah. So even though I still recommend to a lot of people the app Things, it's really great for making lists, syncing it with your calendar, all the things, um, but as some Someone who is 50-50 with Apple ecosystem and also Windows, it just did not work out for me because it's only in the Apple ecosystem. So things app great on your iPhone, on your iPad, on Mac, um, but it's just non-existent for Windows and that's, that's a problem for me. So I have consolidated all of these things into literally only two apps. OneNote, which is my note-taking app. Love OneNote. I have an entire video on it walking through like how to use it and specific things. And then also Notion. What I was using Asana and things for and also like random note-taking apps, I have just consolidated all into Notion. And it's a really great experience no matter what type of device that you're on. So even though OneNote is made by Microsoft, they actually did an amazing job with their iPad had app and it just works seamlessly with the Apple Pencil. It's such a good experience and this depends who, who the person is. OneNote has an infinite page view so you can like scroll out as much as possible and just you know go wherever you want with the notes. It's not like a set page that you then scroll. Some people hate this and I actually really like it because my brain's really you know scattered and I just want to go everywhere with my notes. I do wish that was something you could toggle on and off. I think that would be really smart if OneNote did that, um, but I really enjoy it. And I separate my notes into different notebooks. So I have the 2020 notebook and I'll change out every year and I just have it divided in between. You, 
YouTube switchboard, that creative life and quick notes where I just jot down um, notes that would typically live in a notebook or previously Apple notes or, or the things app. So I really get a lot of value out of OneNote and it works seamlessly across all of my devices. That's huge. I can use the Apple Pencil and I can also use the Dell XPS pen on here to write notes on the touch screen. Um, I like solutions that just work everywhere. Notion. So I got really into Notion because honestly, all of the YouTubers that you guys follow as well as me, Thomas Frank, Ali Abdal, they really give some good use cases for Notion. And I think that's what I was missing for Asana. When I watched this video by Thomas Frank, he provided his template. He really ran through his entire process of using Notion to make YouTube videos in my brain. I was like, this, this is what I have been missing, an actual concrete example on how to do this needed YouTube workflow. And just everything is so cool with the databases and the relational databases. I, it's just like fun to use. I know that sounds like dorky, but I need a tool that keeps me going back to it, not dreading going into it, you know? So I've been using Notion for a lot of different things whether that's trying to plan a wedding in the middle of a world crisis uh, or daily journaling. Um, but what I'll share with you right now is how I use it to keep my YouTube videos straight as well um, as social posts. But again, I'm still filling out this workflow. It is so powerful and there's so many things that you can do with it. So this is literally just scratching the surface. So in Notion, I have a database for my YouTube videos and also the socials. And there's many different things here in the columns that you can interact with it, like tracking the status, um, the dates in which I'm going to publish them, if there is a sponsor, files, are there any socials, and URLs of the final video that's uploaded. And then I use a very similar format for um, the socials database. What is really cool is in Notion you can do a thing called relational databases where you can make these connected. So if you see this arrow icon under the sponsors, that means this column actually associates with another database. Database. So if you click on Norton, who is the sponsor for this video, it'll bring you to an entirely different page where it has the concepts, it has what I need to say. I can go back to the dedicated sponsors database if I actually want to see a list of all of my sponsors with the corresponding columns. So this is an entirely different database, but it relates back to my YouTube videos and that way I can keep track of how many times have they sponsored a video and what videos were that and it will relate back to my YouTube database. So so beyond that, you can actually share pages externally. So something that I just kept on having to do, booking my podcast, That Creative Life, remotely, is sending people information in an email, kind of copying, pasting things. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I could make a Notion page with all of this information. I can send them the link. They can click on it and have all the information in one spot. It's things like this that just really, really are making my life easier. And it's fun. It looks good. It's good for everyone. So Notion is pretty powerful. You you can view your data in different ways, whether it's in a database, it's a list, or it's in the gallery view. Um, so that's what I use for kind of just like this mood board link dump. That's what I call it. It's not a very uh, elegant name, but if I see something on Twitter or on the internet, I can take a screenshot or just hit the share button from my iPhone or iPad and share it straight to this Notion page. So then I can come back to this, whether it's for video ideas or something I just wanted to archive and keep and look later. Um, that has been a really effective way to just kind of store away ideas when I see them floating out on the interwebs. Like I don't want to have to screenshot something, open up an entire app, find the page, upload it to, you know, it's just easy. So OneNote and Notion are huge for me. So sometimes video ideas and the scripting and everything that goes with it will land in the Notion page, but sometimes I just get so into writing something in a OneNote notes that the actual note becomes my North Star for making videos. So I talked about time tracking in a previous video, um, and just to follow up a little bit on that, like I still am loving it. It's really helping, holding me accountable. And when you're your own boss, you need that structure. You need some help. So not much has changed. I'm still using Toggle and Timery. And I'll link the video where I explained in depth how um, I use these two apps together. Um, just a few things have changed where I started actually filling out the description for each of my tasks because I discovered this calendar view with Toggle that is really cool. You can kind of look back on the previous days. Now, I wish they showed the tags. They labeled the tags in that same calendar view. That's a lot of my frustration with Toggle is their 
apps and interface for things are just really bad. And so that's why I use Timery on top of Toggle to track my time entries, to do the timers from my today view. And it's just super fun to use on the iPad. It just stays with me wherever I go to start new timers. It's in my today view. Um, and, and Timery is just a really good iPad app as well. So another thing I changed is I no longer log personal stuff. I don't wanna have to worry about that. So when I'm sitting, I'm being productive, I wanna see how my work days are kind of chopped up. So everything that I'm tracking is working and then also sleeping. So I can do that easy math in my head. Okay, 24 hours minus all of the time that I've tracked and that's how much you know fluff or chill out time I had uh, in between lunch and dinner when I'm not working. And that, that, works, that works better for me and then I don't have to worry about billable versus non-billable. In terms of the iPad apps, of course, Timery is my favorite. And then when I wanna look at the reports and how I've spent my time, um, the Toggle app is really bad. So I basically just made the Toggle Safari web page as an app um, and that just gets me right into the reports. The web version is just so much better. Okay, so up next, I'm gonna talk about the iPad gear that I use along uh, with my home setup and how everything works together. Before we get into that, just thank you so much to Norton360 for sponsoring a portion of this video. Did you know that more than three out of five US consumers have been a victim of cybercrime? That's why I have and recommend a security suite like Norton360. Norton360 has a VPN with bank grade encryption that secures your internet connection and blocks hackers from intercepting the data a user send and receive. So you can only imagine this is super helpful when logging on to public Wi-Fi networks. Even Norton doesn't see or track your online activity with their no-log VPN. The device security features can help protect personal information on your devices and protect against malware and ransomware. Norton 360 also has a password manager, so you can make sure to have super secure passwords and never worry about logging in to one of your 1,000 websites that you need logins for. So many things to remember. <laughs> so listen, with everyone spending so much time online, it's important to keep your data safer and your personal information safer. If you want to learn more about Norton 360, please check out the link in the description below and thank you so much to Norton 360 for sponsoring a portion of this video. Okay, back to the iPad. Okay, so my home setup is an iMac. It is as Apple as I've gotten in a pretty long time. I occasionally still use my XPS and while I'm here working, I do kind of miss my ultra wide and just basic stuff like window snapping. But I figured, hey, while I'm here, might as well go all in. So the iPad is, you know, kind of part of the setup. I basically got this like cheap Amazon plastic stand for my iPad. So it stays there in front of my iMac. And sometimes I'll use it with Sidecar, but for the most part, I'm just using it as an iPad right there, setting timers, responding to iMessage. And it is handy to have that there with the Apple Pencil because it is really easy when you have a screenshot or you have a PDF and you go into the markup settings, there is a little icon with the iPad there where it'll send the screenshot to your iPad. You can use the pencil to mark it up, do whatever you want, and then it'll send it back to the Mac. It's just a super seamless process that actually has been pretty useful. Okay, so let's talk about the Apple Pencil. I've gotten a lot of questions about, is this a skin? What is it? It's actually like a silicon uh, grip, and it makes me enjoy the Apple Pencil much more. Uh, with this on, the charging of it on the iPad and the magnets, they still work. The double tapping the pencil to change over to the eraser when you're writing in your notes app, all that is still fun functional, but it just adds some grip to it. I'm someone who really enjoys the Microsoft Surface Pen. I just, you know, I love the, the thickness of it. I love the tip of it. <laughs> I love the buttons and I love um, that this is a button and this is also, you know, the eraser. This, this is like the pen, the best tablet pen. So hey, if I can make this a little bit more grippy with this grip, uh, I'm gonna do it. So I'll leave the Amazon link in the description below. It also comes with a little cover. So ooh, nice and stealthy, 100% black. Add some protection when it's in your bag and then it stays on the side of your iPad. So I was 100% influenced uh, by YouTubers in that they bought a thing called Paperlike, which is a screen protector for your iPad, um, but it makes it really fun to write on it because it feels like you're writing on your iPad with paper. And that's something that still, I will use all of these you know, multiple, uh, very thin moleskin notebooks to just write random ideas down. I still enjoy that experience 
experience, I was like, ooh, if I get paper, like maybe it'll make me enjoy this experience so much to where I'll ditch all of my moleskin notebooks. Seriously, I have so many uh, that I've been keeping track of for the past five or six years. So I ordered a paper like screen protector in March and then everything happened with uh, supply chains being slowed down and I still don't have it. March, I ordered it in March. So maybe don't order a paper like for a while. I did address this in my iPad review video a little bit, um, but people are like, why Why do you use the normal uh, folio, smart folio case instead of the Magic Keyboard? And the Magic Keyboard just wasn't super worth it for me. If you're using an iPad more as a laptop, then sure, maybe go for it. But occasionally I just need a keyboard and this is great. This gives me a keyboard, but it's also versatile in what you can do. You can kind of write on it like that, or you can flip it back, set it on a flat surface and write on it and interact with it like this. The Magic Keyboard, it's either on your Magic Keyboard or you pull it off and you use the iPad as an iPad. There's like no middle ground where you can keep the case on like this and, and use it like this. And I use this iPad, the 11 inch is such a good size for me as a tablet most of the time. It's good for gripping, I can type on it without the keyboard, and so having a case that is more in the in-between works for me. It's super slim, and yeah, I just, I like it. But yeah, the smudges, what the heck, Apple? What the heck? So the last thing I'll shout out, a part of this, you know, uh, Mac home setup I have going here, is the Logitech Craft Keyboard. It's kind of expensive for a keyboard, but oh my gosh, I love it. Having a full numpad, having the one, two, and three options to connect to multiple different devices is huge. One is my iMac, two is my iPad. Like I said, I don't use Sidecar that much, and that would allow me to use this as a second display to my iMac. Um, but whenever I just have an iMessage or something in the iPad that I'm interested interacting with that isn't pulled up on my iMac, I'll just press two and the keyboard automatically connects to the iPad. I'll type away, do whatever I have to do, and then just press one button uh, to get back to my iMac. And that's not why I got it. The reason why I got it was because of this wheel that's on the, the side of the keyboard. And I'm telling you, it is the only hardware product that I've gotten that is really helpful in Premiere, Photoshop, uh, Chrome, that isn't a hassle to deal with. It's not separate from the keyboard. It's, it's not something I have to remove my hand from the keyboard to use, it's just a part of it. Instead of me pressing minus, 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 plus, plus, plus in the Premiere timeline to zoom in, zoom out, I just use the wheel to very seamlessly zoom in, zoom out. I use it to shuffle in between tabs in Chrome. I was just so pleasantly pleased by this keyboard that I wasn't gonna make a video about it, but I'm glad I kinda have this video to mention it, cause yeah. I'm a big fan. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this kind of random iPad productivity uh, home setup video. You know, it was kind of chill, but that's okay. We're, we're kind of chill over here. We don't have to be doing crazy videos all the time, right guys? Hopefully. So let me know if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button. Um, check out all the links in the description below for what I talked about today. And until next time, y'all stay peachy. Okay, bye.